hello. <laughs> what a horrible intro. I have a bad throat at the moment. And I thought, what better to do than to talk at a camera unnecessarily for too long. And I thought we could have a catch up. But I also just want to do more like casual content because I feel like it's not really me doing like business content the whole time. And I think the reason I like I veer towards that more is because like trying to be taken seriously, A, as a young woman in business as a whole, not that easy. Second of all, like when you got your tits out on the internet for many years, I don't mean actually like, but I, I feel like I've done some things that have kind of like proved myself, but, but no, 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 if you're a woman, things will always be like proved against you. I think I've tried to be more like, serious and I'm just not a serious person like I think it have really come to the realization like I never have been never will be with whatever I do anyone who works with me would also say I'm a very unserious person I'm serious about things and I'm very ambitious and all of that but I'm just not a serious person it's not on brand we take things very lightly over here so here I am I don't know if my voice is coming across as like dying or like sexy Phoebe from Friends like wants to keep her cold. I thought as part of a catch up and rather than having like anything to do with business because it just, just doesn't need to be that all the time, does it? I would ask you some like questions and dilemma -y things that I could maybe help with. Not that any of you have actually asked for advice, I've asked you to ask me for advice so that can tell you what you want it to. But I'm just gonna go through them. We're gonna have a little chat, a little catch up, a little cup of tea. If I made cups of tea, I don't know if anyone else, like I love tea, but I never make a cup of tea. Like I'll never go to make a cup of tea, even though I would love a cup of tea. Someone's asked uncontrollable farts or uncontrollable shits. Anyone who answers uncontrollable shits, I think has a real, real issue. A guy wants to be unofficially official. What does that even mean? So first of all, I'd say that doesn't mean. <laughs> that has no meaning, I would say in general. I would say they probably want to have their cake and eat it, which is fine if you want them to be able to have their cake and eat it too. And you also want to have your cake and also eat your cake. But if you want something more and they want to be unofficially official, like we don't, it just like don't don't hurt yourself just for the fact that you want to see that person more like it doesn't make any sense it's not going to benefit you they're not going to turn around at some point and be like like why would they change that when they have the best of both worlds why would you then have the best best of one world if that's what you want great if that's not what you want no bueno no bueno no no bueno would love a house tour and to know details of your house situation do you own it and rent out rooms so yes i own the house renovated it over 10 months and i rent out the rooms to three of my friends who i met at the pub last summer very safe very stranger friendly definitely what they tell you to do in like stranger danger at school great friends still here loving it i do rent them out they do pay it's mates rates but it's like I wanna live with who I wanna live with and London's fucking expensive and we have a fucking great time here so no qualms with that. House tour, still undecided. What am I gonna do if a serial killer comes around and I've given away all my hiding places? Can I do a house tour without showing you all of the best places in the house to hide? These are all big and very important questions and at some point I'll answer them and potentially do a house tour. I'm doing, I'm a TikToker now. I'm not actually a TikToker. I don't fit in with the Gen Z's. I don't, I, the, the people scare me. And I've definitely, I've done some house tour content on there. So go and look at that if you want to. Um, at some point I might do a more in depth tour on here. Let me know if it's something you'd want. It's fucking three years since I bought the house now. So wanting to work on yourself for yourself, but influenced by the male gaze. I think this is such an interesting one because I think this is something that like, at some point the majority of us will struggle with like i've definitely struggled with it before especially like when i've been like single and in front of so many people and it's like how do i be myself on the internet whilst also being like hey i'm sexy <laughs> date me but i also think that like if you think that the goal is to be with someone who like loves you for you and that you get on really well with and has similar values and like all of these things then they're only going to be attracted to like the authentic you right i don't know anything about any of this shit but what I would say is that like nothing can go wrong by just you working on yourself and trying to be like a better version of yourself for the things that you value yeah work on yourself and the right people will be attracted to that you then also subconsciously know you're then changing yourself for like whatever you want to reach and actually like why do you want to reach those people who don't necessarily like want you that's stupid why do we do that? Your opinion on posting revealing pics, will people take you less seriously if you do? I'd say that maybe employers would, but I'd say that, yeah, there's not really, people are always gonna take women less seriously for something, first of all. Like, if a man posts in the swimming trunks, like, oh, they're at the beach. Like, if a woman posts in a bikini, it's like, ah, oh, someone's thirst trapping. So I probably am not the person to ask about this, because there are probably so many people out there who don't take me seriously, and 
Oh, I've got little slippers on. How cute. Who is she? Hayley Bieber. I think yes. With a much rounder face. I thought I liked being single, but my friends are getting married and I don't have plus ones. So first of all, I don't think not having a plus one is a problem. Go and meet people there. We have so much time and I know that like, especially as a woman, you're like, okay, but do I have time? And it's like, yeah, like I think a few years ago, I honestly thought that like getting to 30, like you had to be married and like settling down by that point. And like, I really don't think there is any chance in hell of me doing that. And if you like being single, fucking enjoy being single, like have a great time. Do what you want to do, live life on your own terms, be able to pursue anything you want to, be able to move country, being able to have that freedom. If that's important to you, keep it important to you. And go have fun without a plus one. There'll be other people you know there. You can meet people there and make friends and have fun. And if you enjoy being single anyway, I'm sure you're fab at doing that. How to deal with drifting friendships. No drama, just drifting. I would say it's a very, very, very natural part of growing up. And by growing up, I mean at like any stage of life. Like you're naturally going to drift away from people. It's just because it's very natural to also just like drift and move and things that you valued at one point, you might not value now and all of this. And I just think that actually there's so much validity in just drifting at some point and there are also people that like as you say it's no drama like there are going to be people that you're going to drift from and you're going to be at different points of your life from and then you might converge like you might both have a kid at the same time or you might both realize that you're the two really like ambitious ones who don't want kids or like whatever i don't think that's a bad thing no drama it's not a problem struggling to date around i want to but i get too attached even to the wrong people this is so like I have so many friends who are like this okay good advice number one read or listen to the book attached I loved that and your attachment style can tell you like a lot about what type of person you are like to date like an anxiously attached you, you sound I don't want to diagnose you but you sound anxiously attached so essentially you'll meet someone and then your kind of life becomes about them and I think that's shamed a lot like that's shamed we think that's kind of like or I like when in the past like I've done that I've thought of myself as like pathetic and be like come on like pull yourself together but I it's also the way some people are attached and it's often like speaking like a psychologist if I actually know what I'm talking about but it's often like derived from things like abandonment issues um and a lot of these other things where you like cling to people and even if it's not the right person but I would read that and like see what you identify with and it has lots of solutions in there for like how to not do that but also how to find the right person because What's that quote? I love the quote. Like, you're only as needy as your unmet needs. That's hard out of a relationship because obviously no one has a duty to provide you with certain things. But I also think that when it gets to like, you, you can choose the right people and you'll often choose the wrong people because you like the types of pain you're familiar with, if that makes sense. So if you're used to being abandoned, you'll go for people who are quite avoidant um, because that's like a pain you're used to and can kind of almost deal with. Anyway, read the book, probably not explaining it very well because I'm not a psychologist, I literally have a music degree. There's also a really good Alain de Botton, who knows how I'm meant to pronounce his name, TED talk on YouTube called Why You're Going to Marry the Wrong Person, I think it is. It's about like psychology um, and attachment theory. Highly recommend. Okay, doors or wheels? This is out of date. I, you cannot convince me that it is not wheels. Because if you think of the definition of a wheel being anything that can like freestanding essential roll, so it could have something like this and it's able to roll and like that is a wheel. Like a wheel of cheese is a wheel. Unless you're saying like wheels on cars, but you're not because you're saying a wheel. So you're saying that anything with that essential, like like a squashed cylinder shape is a wheel. So if you think of like any how, like how the fuck can you think it's doors? How do I build my confidence in dating, etc.? Practice makes perfect. Practice, see what you enjoy, see what you don't enjoy, and do more of the ones you do enjoy and less of the ones you don't enjoy. Also, if you are a really awkward person and you hate it being awkward, just think of a few things like to bring up, just in case it gets awkward. I'm one of those people who fucking hates an awkward silence and ultimately if there's someone I'm like well matched with there won't be an awkward silence but I just can't bear that like it keeps me awake at night and maybe just because I'm like not an adult because you really should be able to deal with like that type of thing maybe just think of maybe bring like those dinner party conversation cards where you like lift up and it's like we should talk about human rights. I want to work for Tal- no oh, thanks. Um, how can I work there? We're actually- we've got loads of openings at the moment. We're really hiring. We were 12 people in- I think when we announced the fundraise in like February. We'll definitely be 25 within the next six months. So that's quite a big expansion. So yeah, just keep an eye out on the LinkedIn. Um, 
that would be cool. How to deal with ending a friendship with someone who can't take accountability. It can be so frustrating. Like I think that a lot of people often need like closure on situations, but at the end of the day, you have to be able to give yourself closure for things. Like you cannot rely on other people to give you closure for situations like, like a friendship ending, like something them not apologizing for something or whatever. You have to be able to accept and move on from those things. Like otherwise you're gonna be waiting. So do I have something sticking out my head? What's the light? I've kind of thought all this time that maybe my hair's all sticking out. Anyway, um, yeah, I think that you need to be able to like train yourself to be able to give yourself closure for situations like that. What are you gonna do? Like you can't force them to take accountability. What you can do is move on with your life and understand they're not gonna take accountability and kind of just, what's next then, you know? How come the house renovation update stopped? A few things I'd say, because the house, re house renovation ended literally as we went into the pandemic. And the last thing I was gonna do when all the headlines were like, people locked at home, like people unable to do this, people dying, lots of crises everywhere. The last thing I was gonna do was sit there and be like, look at this, all of this. Yeah, it, it did not feel right at all. And then as time went on, like I had a very stressful past few years and I know everyone will have but like spent six months buying my previous partners out of Tala to be able to like take the company in the right direction and be you know exactly like where I want it to go and all of that that's a huge thing like that took six months of like heavy back and forth whilst also trying to run the business while trying to grow the businesses whilst trying to pivot my career away from being an influencer just because I realized it made me very like yeah and it made me very depressed like I'm, I'm not gonna lie like it, it wasn't I'm a people pleaser right and you can't be a people pleaser on the internet like you just can't you're never gonna please people and even if you do they're gonna say you don't and like I've had so much love and support always even now when I put out like shit content and or not shit content as in like no content I like it just wasn't right for me and also like I started sorry completely different ramble but I started my career then at like 18 when I started my Instagram and then that grew over the next few years and then I was kind of doing it at university but still doing university full time and then I kind of graduated uni and just realized like I don't want to be an influencer not that there's anything wrong with it at all it's one of the luckiest jobs anywhere ever like I could be on a beach somewhere just like filming and getting money from it like I earned so much more back then like so much more like I'm not you know I am a lot now and I'm very lucky in lots of ways but like it wasn't right for me I'd started a job but I hadn't started my career it was kind of how I then saw it. And so just spent a few years like trying to pivot out of that and trying to see like what I wanted to build for myself. And that was the two companies. Um, and I've spent a long time building those up in terms of teams, in terms of influence marketing programs and all of that. So it's not just associated with me, all of these different things. And ultimately like solely being an influencer for me wasn't where I wanted my life to go. It did not suit my personality. Yeah, it kind of came at the wrong time. Like. The house was done, we went into a pandemic, and then I realized that I had a big existential crisis and I didn't want to do what I was already doing. And then I worked really hard to get everything back on track to be able to be the amazing companies they are today and to take them to the next level and to hopefully build really incredible companies that go far beyond myself. Um, and that's where we are now. So no one actually asked that. I came out with that completely not in a response to any question. Opinions on relationships at work, like from the same shift in emergency services. I think maybe you're asking because you know it's a bad idea. And I think that maybe it will be the love of your life and you'll be together forever. But I also think that you might want me to say that it might be the love of your life and you might be for together forever and therefore you like justify it being a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea. And I think it has the potential to go terribly wrong. And I think that there are many fish in the sea. And if this fish just happens to be your fish, is there like a rotation? <laughs> like, do you ever move out of the same shift? I just think it has the potential to go so wrong. Like, unless you think this person, like, yeah. Unless you think this person, like, really could be it, I would politely decline. How to handle the stress that you should be doing more career-wise when in uni? I think that from my point of view, I'm a very frantic person, so I can't deal with that stress. Like the way I deal with that stress is by applying for 50,000 jobs. Like I was applying for jobs when I was starting up Tala in my third year at uni, uni whilst having started up like Shreddy and socials, like that's how frantic I am. But I also was 
very very lucky to have essentially something lined up so it wasn't a rush but what i would say is that like like you obviously need to get a job after right like you need to be able to make money but that doesn't need to be your career um and i think we have this like fixation on the fact that like you're basically made to choose your career when you're fucking 15 in this country like you're meant to choose subjects that align with things that you can go to university with that if you go to university with you can do that career and all of that you can change career at 35 you can change career at 50 like ultimately i would stress less about trying to find your career and stress more about just trying to find a job in the direction of things you love because your career does not need to be decided at 21 as you walk out of that university okay this is a very good one and a very interesting one would you say you could afford not to have a niche because you are already an influencer yes absolutely i would say so i'd say you don't necessarily need a niche i'd say there are some platforms you do need a niche to like blow up really quickly on so we're talking like youtube would be the least niche needing then i'd say instagram because you can have you know, you can have long captions, all of that, like TikTok. I'd say you probably do need a niche more to blow up at the beginning. She says not having blown up. But at the end of the day, like, do you want more followers and a niche? Or do you maybe want fewer people who are actually interested in, like, all the different sides of your personality? I, for example, haven't concentrated on growing on, in growing on social media for years now. Like, years and years. Because for me, and again, that's something I can afford to do because it's not my main job, if that makes sense. Like, it's not how I make money. I make some money through there but it's not the main place I make money I'd say that it completely depends what you want from it because if you do want a lot of followers then yeah you might need a niche but if you want fewer followers who care more then you probably don't you just need to show yourself more and create that relationship with people I screenshotted it the other day actually because someone had replied to my story and you know how it shows you a, like story someone's replied to before and it was from like 2016 when I was in my first year at uni and I remember I was like talking loads about the elections and I at the time was like very much only a fitness influencer like that I don't mean like only I mean like that was all I was posting and I remember I was posting loads about the election and everyone was being like stick to fitness all of this and I was so baffled because I was like I'm not even good at fitness like I'm showing you my journey but it's not like that's never been like the biggest part of my life but yeah and I think that like social media does want to like because it wants you to add value so the way you can add value is usually by one specific piece of content but actually you can add value as being a person, if that makes sense. In which case, spread your wings and fly, little girl. How to get over a situation ship, I'm dying. There's n I was about to say, this is so tough love. I was about to say, there's nothing sad about be like not being with someone you don't want to be with. Of course, even if you can rationalize your feelings and the reason why you're not together, of course it can still be sad. But I would just say like, you deserve so much more. If a situ situationships are great, like being in something that's not a thing and like all of that, if that's what you want. If it's not, then you just deserve so much more. And like you you being out of that frees up your time to find that or to just work on yourself or just to, like, you don't even need to be like either working on yourself or looking for a relationship or in a relationship, whatever. Like you can just be living life. Doesn't need to revolve around that. And I know that's easier said than done, but like, if it's not right, it's not right. What tattoos do you have and would you get more and what of? Um, I do, I have two tattoos. I have a little like B, like the letter here, B. I was always called Grace B as a child, like even in my family, like obviously there wasn't another Grace, which is a funny story actually, because my mom does have two brothers called Simon, which is very strange. Anyway, I have just like a little lowercase B because I was always called Grace B and both my mum and my dad's last names begin with B. Anyway, small, cute, always forget it, kind of sometimes think it's small. And then I have a tattoo here, which was my mum's nickname of me, which is like on my hip. Um, and I don't think I would get any more, you know? There was one period where I was definitely like, I saved loads of tattoos on my Instagram folder and I was definitely very keen. And I just think that actually, I like change so much that it's just not good, a good idea for me because I'm just gonna decide I don't like it at some point and then what am I gonna do? Tell us the worst date you've ever been on. Not a date, but I actually, twice in my life, I have, um, I don't know, I always like, I don't think I'm a very quick mover. Like I think I freeze up in like stressful situations. I don't know, like people maybe miss reading things because in both of these situations I have not been keen and like one of them was like a business thing and someone then like essentially like leaned in to like get with me and um I all I could think to do was go like this like this I did this in a man's face and said please don't and that has happened not once but twice so that is clearly my reflex for blocking someone trying to kiss who I do not want to and have never expressed a want to, but apparently that's not a <laughs> reason not to kiss someone. Should I take a year out from uni to start a business or do uni and business at the same time? Thanks. I cannot comment on your situation. I don't know what you have the luxury to do. I don't know how much time you have, all of that. But I would always recommend 
just knowing the type of person I am, I would always have a safety net. So I would say to start it at the same time, unless it's something you're super passionate about, know how to crack the market, maybe even have some funds to put into it and think that now's the time and like the market's gonna change. I think you can learn so much from just doing it as a side hustle because you put so much, you're so productive with it. You put so much concentrated effort into it um, to make it happen. Oh, a driver's just got out of his driver's seat in the middle of the road. London provides gems upon gems at all times. Anyway, find your your like ideal type of customer, see what areas they're in, like see what products they need, do some questionnaires, like all of these various different things to work out like what how you can make your product better, then test it probably with a minimum viable product, get it out there, test what works on ads, all of these things. Because I'd say the majority of the time businesses start and then pivot completely and realize this is the product instead or this is the product instead. And I think that you need to give yourself the luxury of being able to do that, which includes not forcing yourself under so much pressure and leaving. Fake tan tips please, I know you use Bondi but your application looks flawless. I actually have a new technique. I used to use Vita Liberata and my mum, who uses that, skin cancer like runs very heavily in our family, so my mum has always faked hand and um, yeah, never really been out in the sun and all of that. She's always used Vita Liberata and has sworn by it and says it lasts like three weeks and I've been like, three weeks, that is like, that's a joke, that's ridiculous. And then I tried it and it didn't last three weeks. And then I read the back of the bottle and it says what you do is you like put it on, leave it for four or eight hours or whatever, wash it off, then do that again the next day and then again, the next day and it lasts for three weeks and by this point I didn't have any Vita Liberata left so I tried that with Bondi Sands but I didn't want it to be like not natural like I only ever yeah I only ever want to go to a shade that I tan to and so I put on I did the same but only with two layers because I was very scared it worked really well and it lasted so long the only annoying thing is it stays on so well that you can't actually scrub it off like it fades really naturally but then sometimes like I needed to scrub mine off because I needed to go to a laser appointment and you can't have fake tan and laser because it like stops the treatment or something and I, I was trying to scrub it off and I literally couldn't I had to turn up and be like you can't do my legs have my food instead do Tala and Shreddy or Shreddy in employees come to work in Tala or usual smart casual work attire. I would say it's not even smart casual, like we don't really have a, we'll have a dress code for external meetings because you can't really turn up in, I don't know, something that's like entirely unprofessional, but we're also like, we're an active wear brand. You can wear a tracksuit, but I'm of the opinion that there's no point in making things harder that don't need to be harder just because you want to like express, express? Ext what am I trying to say? Just because you want to like something your power Whatever the word I'm trying to say is, you can fill it in for yourself. So I think that's enough of me rambling. I have nothing else to add. I feel like also the majority of the time, like the way I answer questions is like reading a question and then deciding to answer like a completely different question, which I think isn't necessarily a good trait, um, unless I want to be a politician. It's a consideration. It's not, it's not, it's not at all. Have you seen how women get treated in politics? It is awful. It is horrendous. I do, I, it is awful. Anyway. Also, again, not the topic. Does she have the ability to stay on topic? No, not at all. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna try and do more casual fun content. Don't hold me, do it. This is the, I'd say the one area of my life, like I'm very good at sticking to things. I'd say it's the one area of my life just because it like does kind of have to be a hobby and then I'm like, but I have hobbies. See you soon, have a lovely evening, day, morning, night, peace and love.